really quick before we get started if you are blessed by this ministry if you're blessed by this platform anything that i bring to the table i ask you to partner with me via patreon go to patreon.com backslash truth seeker and you unlock rewards my entire discography of music webinars meditations weekly hangouts and so much more patreon.com backslash truth seeker go check it out won't you come come and take Podcast streaming live at truthseeker.com, your source for spiritual and inspirational music, teachings, and media. The show is designed to help you grow in your walk with Christ and advance the kingdom of heaven. And now, your host, Truth Seeker, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Truth Seeker Podcast. Excited to be with you again. I'm your host, Truth Seeker. Today, my guest is my dear friend, my good friend, Gil Hodges. Gil, welcome to the podcast, brother. How are you? I'm doing well, and I'm glad to be here. It's been a, been a while, so looking forward to some conversation. Heck yeah, <laughs> always, man. We always have fun talks together. I've been doing this yeah. for a while, and uh, you are you just came out with a book? Well, it will be coming out uh, October, probably around 15 to 21, somewhere in there it will be coming out, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so we're, called we're, choice. Choice. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that. That's a big uh, it's a big topic. I've heard catchphrases and and buzz buzzwords behind it. A uh, good friend right. of ours, Karina, says your choice you, chooses you. That's her tagline. You know, your choice you, chooses you. So we'll we'll talk about that. But but first, I want to kind of give a quick introduction for you for you know a lot of my people watching um, who are looking for um, a fellowship of people online who. Um, I would use the term Christian mystics. You guys are uh, Christians and you're, you're you're more open to some of the things that conversations, at least, that w- wouldn't be had in a regular traditional church settings. And you guys are yeah. pretty mystical because you, you, you there's not a box that God lives in, but you guys encounter him and and uh, and, and follow him through the person of Jesus Christ and Christianity. So. For my people watching who are looking for, you know, other people like Truth Seeker, they're like, Truth Seeker, there's nobody else. That's a lie. There's more people like me. There's more people like you guys listening, watching, just like you and Gil and Adina Hodges with Kingdom Talks are are those people. So make sure everybody, my friends, fans listening, tap in with your work too. Yeah, well, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, so we've we've had the Kingdom Equipping Center for about eight years and uh, we've kind of gone... Um, pretty close to just online anymore and uh, it's worked for us and our community is online and just been really wonderful because we're we're all about relationship Mm -hmm. and and um, just believing that uh, well you you know our three plumb lines we've had for years and just the first one is that Jesus Christ is the way he is he showed us the way to the father and to eternal life and um Second plumb line, love, honor, and respect. It's like we're not all going to agree on how to interpret the Bible. So let's just, if we got number one down together, then the number two is just I'm going to honor your your understanding, even though I may not agree with it. And that's okay. And then number three is just believing that everybody has a relationship and Father's constantly talking to all of us. And it's just a, a process of learning to ask the Father, you know, rather than going to the leaders and trying to get their opinion on your life. Why not go to the Father and get His opinion on your life? It would be much better, in our opinion. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And uh, people are doing that and finding uh, finding peace, finding bliss, and uh, you know they're able to keep Christ. You know, keep the main thing, the main thing. You know, yeah. um, which has been always about debate and what you're against and all that versus what we're for. And if we double down right. on that, we we've seen. Um, the potential and the beauty, the healing and the restoration 
of it, and, I, and we champion that. So again, hats off to what you guys are doing and everybody else yeah. trying trying to follow suit, man. We're trying to raise the standard, you know, the plumb line, raising it higher. Love, you know, love, yeah. <clears throat> so Good. let's let's talk about this book, man. Um, talking about well, choices. Yeah, you know, it's funny because it's just over the last five to seven years. Um, I've just kind of boiled my understanding of God down to to two things, and 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 when I'm in a group, you know, I've shared this, and I just said I'm gonna I'm gonna say two things, and every Christian's going to agree with these two things, until we start digging, and then you're gonna find out, oh no, you don't agree with those two things, and here they are. So the first one is God is all powerful. It's like everybody's yeah yeah right he is, and then the second one is God is love. He's all love, and. People, Christians are going to go, yes, yes, absolutely. And then we start digging in and we start finding out that, wait a minute, you know, because a lot of Christians don't believe. Okay, now, I, and again, maybe we'll butt heads here, maybe we won't. But this is a major change in my life, in my understanding of who God is, and that he's going to restore everything he's created. Why? Because he's all powerful. He is all powerful and he is almighty. And even through scripture, it talks about him bringing restoration. And that restoration is for everything that he's created. And the thing is, if he can't restore just one thing, he's not all powerful. He's all powerful except for that one thing. So, you know, logically, he's either all powerful or he's not. And then loving, it's like, you know, the, the cliche comment or, or question is like, would you burn your children in hell or would you torture your children in hell forever? Would you do that to your own kids? And it's like, there's no human being in their right mind that would say, yes, I would do that if they were really, really evil. And, and it's like, no, that's not love. Yeah. We know as human beings made in his image that that's just not love. So if God is love, he will restore everyone and everything in love. And so my book called Choice is about the fact that when he created the universe, he created everything with choice. Because without choice, there can be no love. And he is love. So how can he create a universe that is opposed to his, you know, uh, uh, love, which is, you know, again, you can't have love without freedom. You've got to have that free will to choose love. Otherwise, you're just a robot or a slave. And so choice is the most powerful thing in the universe. That's the tagline on the book. <clears throat> Excuse me. The tagline on the book is the you know choice, the most powerful thing in the universe next to God. So it's got dot, dot, dot next to God because God is all powerful. But when he created everything, he created it with choice because there can be no love without choice. And because he's love, everything has choice. And so, you know, we talk about the, the fallen angels and uh, even Lucifer himself. It's like, OK, wait a minute. We use the word fallen. And when we use that word, we're basically saying they went from one area of being unfallen to being fallen. How did they do that? They chose they made choices that took them down that road to be called now un, to be called fallen. Mm -hmm. And so same thing with human beings. We we fall and then we repent and then we get back up and then we fall. You know, these are all because of choices that we're making. And God doesn't come along and say, OK, I've given you enough times. I mean, Jesus even said, how many times do you forgive? Mm -hmm. And uh, the point of the seven times 70 is that he will always forgive us. And so it's just a matter of understanding that choice has to be in place for there to be love. And at what point, you know, because people will say, well, you know, some people aren't going to make it to heaven just because they choose to. They don't want to be with God. And I'm like, OK, yeah, choice gives every person the right and the ability to resist God forever. But will they? Because if God is all powerful and he's number one and he is love. It says that love never fails, and I believe that love will pursue us through eternity yeah. until our choice changes to the point where, and it's just a matter of understanding that we are loved and cared for, and most people that don't want to be with God don't believe that he is loving and caring because of what they've been taught. Yeah. Anyway, there's there's, there's a there's an introduction. No, that's so good, because <laughs> I mean, 
there's so many, you know, points to it. And even what we started talking about before we went live and I'll try to tie back into that. But, um, you know, what, what I what I discussed with you before we went live too is use this people being in jail, prison, you know, prison exists for people who abuse their choices. They keep making the wrong choices over and over and over. Hey, hold on. We got to take this choice away. You don't you you have proven that you are great at making bad decisions and bad choices. So prison is supposed to be a time of reform. Prison reform. Hey, take a time out. Think about what you did. You know, let's get you let's get you in some programs. Let's help you get your GED. Let's get your it's supposed to be that. You know, and so the, yeah. even an idea of hell, of like a permanent thing or whatever the case is, or a per, it's a, it's you got to learn. We learn through experience. Like we can read the Bible, we read all types of warnings. Don't do this, and then Adam <laughs> and Eve do it anyway. I gotta yeah. know. I want to experience to make sure you're not lying to me, because there's right. there's some of that going on too, right? So I think even you know, with the whole, the broader perspective of, of the hell conversation, um, of, you know, what is it? If, is it real? Does any, is anybody there now? Is it a pro it's a process that souls go through and, uh, yeah. you know, and it is a, it is a fall to a lower estate than earth. Humans are in a fallen state now, right? We've heard that, you know, original sin, we, we, we fallen from some place, a, a lofty, beautiful, gracious place. And now we're here confused, dealing with addiction, dealing with depression, dealing with bills. This isn't like this is, place is different. Right. But if we're falling, that means we existed somewhere higher that was probably had some uh, a higher glory to it. There's one yeah. glory of the angels. There's one glory of humans and of the, the animals. Right. We were in this glorious place and now we're here. But then you can keep falling. You can fall again. You can go into hell and. If anyone did this with with their choice, though, Jesus, man, like the gospel is like Christ left his place of authority in the heavens and became a man. And so he fell. He descended. And then he, he said, chose. you know what? I'm going to mm -hmm. go down one more time. I'm going to descend again. And so he descended from heaven to earth and then from earth into the grave into the pit and goes down there and says, Hey guys, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to help you guys get out. I'm going to show you how to get out of this mess. Show you know, the and, then, and then he reverses this process of which is what we call ascension. But, um, yeah, you know, all of that is the process of, of falling and, and, and choosing, if you will. Um, which is powerful is how we worship God. We choose to worship. We're not robots. Mm -hmm. we, we come upon our own free will. So, yeah. Uh, before we tie into the, the original thing we talked about, do you have any, you know, response to that? Because I know you're, you know, a big advocate of the fire of purification as well. That That is yeah. the Holy Spirit, I'll say, but that's even throwing too much. But go ahead. Well, it, it, you know, I do believe in, well, let me back up, because hell is a fabricated term that we've applied to the Bible, which, you know, it works when you're talking in some context, you know, certain contexts. Um, cause I could use the word hell in explaining what I would believe would be more like a purgatory, mm -hmm. um, because I do not believe, okay. So when we leave this realm, when we pass over the veil and go to the other side, I do not believe that God just says, boom, okay. All that stuff that you believe that was wrong. No, nope, Now you're going right into heaven. That's a violation of our free will. It's a violation of our choice. And I do not believe he violates it. He may, he's the grand master at chess. You know, he's going to be able to, you know, manipulate things around you to help you make the right choices. But we have the right to resist him completely. But as we cross over, I believe that we may be at that point into a, a, a season and a place like, um, like, like I said, it could be called a purgatory where it's the in-between time where you're not going to be allowed. I don't believe that you know any of us are going to be allowed into the kingdom in our current condition because we've got too many things that uh, we've not let go of. Let, let me put it this way. It's like forgiveness is a big key. Forgiveness is a big key because Jesus, God says that he's not going to allow us into heaven if, if, we, you know, if we're not going to forgive, he's not going to forgive. 
And you, we look at that verse and we think, well, that's just so arbitrary and that seems so mean, but it's not. It's very logical because for me, if I can think of forgiveness in terms of like letting go, you know, I'm, if I'm going to forgive somebody for something they've done to me, it means I'm finally just going to let it go. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to look at them with love and I'm just, I'm, and I'm not going to hold it against them anymore. I'm going to let it go. So if I'm willing to let go what someone did to me, then I'm willing and able to, to, uh, you know, when I get into heaven, if I've let it go and I see that person, you know, it's going to be greetings and, and forgiveness and love and repentance. It's going to be a beautiful thing. But if I'm still holding on to it, if I've not forgiven, if I've not let it go and father lets me into the kingdom and I see that person, I'm like, I remember what they did. Bam, <laughs> you know, right there in heaven. It's like, yeah, probably not going to happen. So I have to be willing to forgive and let go of all the offenses that have taken place against me so that Father can forgive and let go and let me into the kingdom. Yeah. He wants us in the kingdom, but he can't just let anybody into the kingdom unless we've gone through the process of the cleansing, the cleansing fire, which will reveal to us anything and everything that we have still held on to that is not of God. Yeah. Or that's keeping us from him. So that purgatory is an important part. And I do believe that in that place of purgatory, I don't know because I haven't been there, but I mean, these are just kind of revelations. Like you said, we've been in the mystic movement for a while. Transition place, my engagements. Right? A What's place that? of waiting, like a transition place of yeah. waiting, like retraining, reschooling, where we, we get to go through the, the process of uh, without the evil and the darkness that we have here. We cross over, and now without the deception and the darkness that we have here, Father, the, the angels, Holy Spirit, Jesus, I believe are there to help us transition and to help us, uh, I should say, retrain us so that we have a correct understanding. Because we cross over, we're still going to have some strongholds that are basically beliefs that we carry that do not allow us to align with who God really is. And so that's going to be where we get retrained, re Re, you know, uh, uh, re, reprocessed so that we can align, but it's all got to be our choice. So whether it takes an hour or whether it takes a billion years, you know, we're going to go through that process and, and it's, it's a must before we can enter into the kingdom. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't want to project that this is, is the thing, you know, and we've, we've noticed this just by talking to so many people, like we have podcasts and talk shows and we, talk to different people and you start noticing patterns or, you know, you visit churches. We've been in this thing for a while, many different types of denominations, myself, you included. Um, mm -hmm. And you notice this, uh, this thing where mm -hmm. I've noticed, and I'm sure you have too, if you remove the consequence of hell for many Christians, there's no longer a reason to serve God. Like they're, they're Christians and they serve God. They're in ministry, helping people only contingent upon their fear of going to hell. I've met those people. That's it. Um, they, it, they, their minds can't fathom around, you know, that if God does, wouldn't destroy me, how I would still, you know, try to live a holy life and be a good person and follow Christ. Like, it's, it's very strange. So you're talking about getting that thing out of you. Like, yeah. it's kind of like the law, right? Because the law is set up as a training, a schoolmaster, training wheels to lead you to Christ. Hey, hey let's, mm -hmm. let me give you some boundaries. These are the three plumb lines that uh, we need to work, work by. And uh, like, this is something that's gonna help you. And then eventually you don't, you know, those, those people had to be told, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not covet. And it's like, because they, they wanted to, then they had to be told not to. Well, I, I'll do it. But hey, they said no. Eventually, in the, what the fire of the baptism of the Holy Spirit does for believers is that if those things are in you and, and they can be that a lot of those things were in me and maybe some of them still are. Let's say that I'm not a, better than, you know, ascended, whatever. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the fire of the Holy Spirit allows allows that nature to be burnt up and be destroyed. Not when you die. But we kickstart it here and Christ is yeah. getting you ready for the judgments by bringing his judgments upon yourself. 
Search my heart, O oh God. See if there be any wicked way in me. And guess what? If you say it and you mean it and you pray it, like he shows it to you. And it could be, you know, uneven scales. It could be you stealing money. It's you, you, you bend the truth. You, you know, little things like that that are like you want to be purified. You want to be made righteous and exalted. Well, these little things are hurting people and you can't see them. So the fire of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to, to get that out of you. So that when yeah. you're ready to go to the higher place, the next standard, the you get the job promotion. Any yeah. any job yeah. would do this. You'd have to take tests. You would have to, you know, make sure that you were retaining what you learned. Any school you're in, there's a pop quiz that comes up. You don't just get promoted, 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 and then you know you're not worthy, or counted because you're gonna mess everything up. I mean, that's what the fallen angels or fallen watchers are. They were watching over a people, watching over themselves, and they they turned a blind eye, you know, and said they quit watching. And so they, hey, man, like people are getting hurt on your watch. Why are all these souls dying on your watch? You know, we let Michael watch and he's, he hasn't lost one. He's given me a return. We can get deep yeah. into this, but this is a, this is a watching and, and choosing to, so that you can be a good steward yeah. with with everything God has given us, our breath, our time, our money, our imagination, because if you are, he rewards you. We have to believe that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him and and he no good deed goes overlooked. And uh, th yeah. this process is amazing to know that you're working with him, that you can start that process now and, and try your best to identify and get the things out of you, you know, these habits, character flaws or whatever that are either hurting you or hurting others. Yeah. Yeah. Choose to do it. Now, well, isn't that a beautiful choice that we're choosing to pray a prayer like God search my heart? You don't have to pray that. On. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, in my book, I, I, I really spend some time focusing on, I don't call it this in the book, and I even hesitate to say it here, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say it and then try to explain it. But, you know, in some ways, the church has become the greatest enemy to God. Now, let me explain that. Because God is love. And perfect love casts out all fear. There, God and love, God and fear have nothing to do with one another, you know. And, and yes, the Bible, you know, the Bible talks about fearing God, but that's a respect, that's an honor. That's not talking about being afraid of Him and petrified and terrified, you know, that He's going to annihilate you. But His awe can cause you to fall to your face and fall to your knees, you know, when you see Him and and just are so awed by Him. It's just remarkable and just overwhelming. But it's not a terrified fear that he's going to destroy you. And so, you know, I, I look at that and I, and, and I realize the church has turned what is their gospel into uh, a fear-based gospel, where if you don't line up and do all the things that that church and denomination tells you you should do, then you are at risk of going to hell and burning there forever in certain denominations. In yeah. some denominations, you'll be annihilated and you'll you'll cease to exist. You know, it's uh, just a variation of of hell. But but it's so sad that the church has gone down that road and stolen the true gospel of love. And so when people say to me, it's like, well, if Jesus, you know, uh, you know, if there's no hell, then why why did Jesus die? I'm like. Oh my goodness, you know, it just is a complete and utter failing of the church and us, you know, the church is the people, to be able to share the love of God, the true, unconditional love of God, where he wants every single person to know that you that we can trust him, we can trust him fully, that he will take care of us and he will work everything out for our good. And you know, the problem that we run into is our own expectations. And I spend a chapter on this, expectations versus expectancy, where sometimes a lot of people will cry out that God did not make something work out good, you know, and in their favor or for their good. And 
then you begin to question them and it's like, well, what didn't happen? And you find out that, oh, wait a minute, they had an expectation of what good would look like. And because it didn't work out that way, now they're disappointed. And that's where we get in trouble with expectations, especially when we start placing those expectations on God. So learning to live with an expectancy that our God is a good father who has your best in mind and that whatever is happening, he's got your best in mind and whatever comes out of it is for your good. And there may be challenges. Yeah. You know, you may find yourself in jail. You may find yourself, you know, grieving over certain things. But at the same time, when, you know, I, I'm 100% convinced that when we get on the other side and we're able to look back at all the different events that took place, that we grew in love and we grew as overcomers because of the things that happened in our life and that we were willing to go through and, and overcome. But, you know, yeah, we're, we've, we've got to grow. And I believe that's why we're all here is mm -hmm. to grow in love. And that's okay. the, that's the one thing. And I'll, I'll, I'll stop there for a second. But, um, you know, the one thing we're here is to choose to grow in love. You know, we're here to learn to love. So we have to learn to choose love in every circumstance. And, and I'll, I'll go into that deeper in a minute. No, that's good. So good. Um, there's a, a couple people like, you know, as uh, time is the time is interesting. Time, time, time will tell. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and and what time does the people, what life does the people. Um, you know, un, you know, death, um, unexpected things happening in people's lives, people changing, you know, scripture unraveling for you that allows you to see it from a different perspective. Like time is very interesting. And I look at some people um, that that I that I like um, who are ministers and, I, and I'll name two of them um, that I know for sure. And, and there's other people who have said this to other friends and stuff, but. Two of them in, in, who are like, I guess they're part of our movements in a, in a way. John Crowder, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, he's the new mystics yeah. and he's been, he was a forerunner in, in a lot of this. Him and uh, Damon Thompson. I look up to both of these men. Really love Damon Thompson. He's here local. I've been following his work for years, his, his ministry and uh, love his stuff. I don't listen to a lot of people, but he's one dude that I, I l listen to. But, you know, as far as being all inclusive, that everybody gets in, they, they, they have both said this, that the only thing stopping them from being a universalist to where, hey, nobody goes to hell, Jesus's, Jesus's victory was enough for the entire cosmos, everything you can think of, you know, he says the only they, they both say the only thing that the only reason they're not a straight universalist is because of choice and free will and that you can uh -huh. choose to separate yourself. But but for me, so it that, ties it ties into the, the, ch the child thing, the story of the prodigal son. Yeah. And yeah. like you being wicked, who wouldn't you wouldn't do that to your children? Why would God do it to you? You know, yeah. now he chastises his children. Absolutely. You know, he took, yeah. you know, out of, out of, um, cause he Brexus. loves you. Like there's yeah. consequence and there has to be consequence, yes. but it's not, it is, it is not, and there is no condemnation for those right. that are in Christ. And, uh, right. you know, God is about restoration. So I wanted to throw that out there. You know, there's those, those people who they would be all in, but the free will. And it's like, so my, my question to them would be, at what point does God take away free will? You know, so, I mean, just, just imagine that we're all crossing over, we've all crossed over, and we're on the other side, whether we're in purgatory, hell, or heaven, or, you know, kingdom, you know, wherever we're at, at what point in which one, any one of those lines does God say, at, yeah, at this point, I'm just stopping their choice, they, they no longer have choice, they're just going to, you know, especially those in hell, they're just going to suffer the rest of the time, I'm like, does that well then you just took god just took away the ability for true love because now he took away choice there's no free will in that if he does that so if they do have free will and they do have free choice i cannot help like the prodigal son and the father who runs out and never gives up on that son i cannot imagine that again whether it took a 
an, an hour or a billion years that Father and Jesus and Holy Spirit and others in that person's life that have meaning and influence are, you know, that are already in the kingdom are coming back to that person and sitting down with them on occasion, whether it's, you know, every hour, every year, every hundred thousand years, whatever, mm -hmm. time is going to be irrelevant at that point, but that they sit down with that person and just reason with them that God is love, you know, to just to help them understand that it's safe, you're taken care of, you can trust him. Because again, that's why people don't want to be with God, yeah. is they do not know him, they do not trust him, they do not believe that they're safe with him. It's all these things that basically the church has instilled into them, unfortunately. But when, you know, again, it's just back to when does God take away that choice? Because eventually, now if it's a burning hell where it's fire, if it, if that were true, it's like how many of us have been burned, you know, had a finger burned, you know, or, you know, just a little grease splattered on you. It's painful. And if it were a literal fire, it's like how long would someone be in that before they're like, hey, 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 I want to change my mind. I want to choose differently. I want out of here. And again, maybe on that purgatory trail where they've got to retrain and relearn, which we will all have to go through to some degree. But when we get to the other side of it, it's we've finally forgiven all things for whatever you know, has happened to us, and we are able to transition in. So again, unless God annihilates people, takes away their freedom of choice, then the very fact that they still have freedom of choice means they can change their mind. They can choose differently. And at what point does God give up? If he is love and love never fails, tell me when he gives up. <laughs> And he's not going to give up just because someone says, well, I don't want you, God. If that yeah. were the case, we'd all be lost because at some point we've all said, no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I like the um, the analogy or a quote that um, our good friend Martin Smith always says, just just the how, how we look at the fall of what Adam did to mess everything up was powerful enough for the entire Earth, the cosmos, whoever is a part of that fall, like Adam did something, fall entered humanity. But the work that Christ did, which is the second Adam, the last Adam, that redeemed humanity back, his wasn't as powerful, you know, because he could snatch some out of his hand. So he wasn't as powerful as Adam. He's good and like he, he loves Christians and stuff. He loves, he loves you if you love him. Um, right. You know, but... He, the Bible says he's yeah. not willing that any should perish. But yeah, shout out to Martin because he 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 holds it up like, listen, in Adam I'll die, but in Christ I'll live. So yeah. if you're a product of the fall, and it and it's has nothing to do with you, you're just born in it. Then maybe you're a product of the grace flood, and it has nothing to do with you, and you're just born in it, and you just don't know it. Yeah, yeah. Nobody told you. So which is the gospel. <laughs> And, you know, all of this for me came to me in, you know, you talked about us being mystics and, you know, mystic is someone that just engages with God and actually believes that that, that yeah. spiritual entity actually exists. It's like, yeah, he does. And he speaks to us still today. And so the revelation that I've received has been, I don't, I don't read much. I really don't. I, I, I just, you know, I'll just be flat out honest, you know, in college, I, I was finally told it's like, I've got a major reading disability and it's really challenging. If I'm going down the road and I'm looking at a sign, a, you know, a road sign, sometimes I'll look at that thing and all the words are just scrambled up and I'm like, huh, what? And phew, it's gone. And I'm like, I have no idea what that sign said <laughs> because my brain takes a while mm. to put it all together. So it's a struggle for me to read. I don't read a lot. So I'm not being influenced by all these other things. My, you know, and but I hear it from other people, obviously, but my engagement time with Father has come just by questions and questions. And it's like if we would, if any and all of us would just begin to question what you believe currently, we, you can probably come to some really obvious answers. You know, just like what you just shared. It's like, well, it was was Adam's fall greater than Jesus's ability to restore? And like Oh, so Jesus was pretty weak. Okay, yeah. So he, yeah, God, but yeah, not really able to you know you know, you know he created the entire universe. People, I mean, every quantum level physics thing that we know, he did it. He already did it, and more. 
He did all that and he's created this world that we exist on with all of its crazy ecosystems and, and stuff that works. He did all that but he's not really good enough to sit down and have a conversation with you at some point and uh, actually convince you that he loves you and that he's, you know, wants you to be in his kingdom. He can't do that because you're too smart for that. You're, you're smarter than him. You can overcome that. You yeah. can talk Jesus down. It's like, no, Jesus, you, ain't you can outwit like God <laughs> <laughs> with your choice. You know, and it's just, yeah. it's just bizarre. Some of the things that, that we think. And, and like I said, you know, is God all powerful? Every Christian says, yeah, is he all love? Is he all love? Yeah. And then we start going down those questions and you just realize how much we believe and have believed and worked, you know, our lives around, not realizing that it doesn't line up with either one of those. And so for me, you know, those two, those two plumb lines, they're plumb lines. It's like, if it doesn't line up with God is all powerful, if it doesn't line up with that, he's all love then I need to rethink what I believe and again, go to father and begin asking the questions. It's like, what's going on? I've been taught this thing. And that, you know, our pride and arrogance gets in the way. It's like, we've been taught this and we want to be right. So we would rather argue that we're right than actually line up with who God really is. <laughs> it's a process. It's order. And you got to trust the process and trust yeah. order. He knows yeah. what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, going through all the all the things heartache and life and that's a part of what this reality is you know and it does it make you better or does it make you bitter how do you respond yeah. to it you okay know, so that's the choice that's what i you, like to that's another section of my book it's 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 looking at the fact that um you know we do not have the power to choose everything that happens to us you know, you can get in a car wreck, you know, yeah. any number of things, you know, you can fall down and skin your elbow. We don't have the power to control or choose everything that happens to us, but we do have 100% control and power over how we respond to each and every one of those situations. Yeah. And that's where we get the, the, the ability to learn to grow in love is that whenever, whatever happens to me, I want to be able to automatically and habitually, because I've made so many choices in the direction of love, that I automatically begin to, and it's still a choice. I say automatically, but yeah. it's still a choice, but it's a choice <laughs> because just, I've habitually yeah. been making it, and now it comes pretty automatic. And then, and then and, people think you don't struggle with it because you're just good at it, and they don't see. They're like, oh, you all, you're always happy. It's like, ah, I choose to be happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, that, that's something to keep in mind. And so, you know, the first chapter of my book, I go through the revelation of where Father actually took me into the heavens and showed me how the, the power of choice was so ingrained into all of creation. And that was just, you know, mind-blowing. So I start with that, and then I go into the challenges to choice. The challenges to us being able to choose the right things and to choose love is our stinking programming. You know, from the moment we come out of the womb or even when we're in the womb, we already start getting programming from our parents. And then we're taught things from our parents and our family. And then we're taught things from our, you know, uh, church or, you know, whatever part of, you know, society that we're part of. You know, we get taught by that. We get taught by our community. We get taught by our, our governments, you know, our nations. America is the best. You know, and pretty much every American, not everyone, but pretty much every American believes that America is the best. While over in Russia, Russia is the best. I'm like, it's your programming, people. We've got to get past the programming and begin to, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a humanist in the sense that I'm for humans. Yeah. <laughs> I'm for humanity. And, and and I believe that we all should be operating together as one. And so for me, I've even had to go down and start tearing down some of that programming, even as a nationalist. And then as a community, as, you know, the church community, and even what my parents taught me, go through all that and begin to question it. Because these are the challenges that we have to choice. Some people, and I get this all the time, it's like, well, some people just think they don't have a choice. And that was me 20 years ago. I really did not think I had a choice. But as long as you think that, you are in a hopeless, helpless victim situation, and you cannot, if that's true, you cannot and never will get out of that. But the truth is, you do have choice. Absolutely, 100% have choice. It's just you may have to dig down and dig past all your programming sometimes in order to get to it. Yeah. You have to take responsibility. Yeah. 
I mean, it seems yeah. like that's what God wants you to do is like own it and um, learn from your mistakes so you don't have to repeat them. You know, those yeah. who don't learn from their past mistakes are doomed to repeat them. You know, the society, right. the, the culture. Um, but yeah, it's choosing to maintain peace. You know, yeah. maintain in this life, man. Like, there's things that you learn. And, mm -hmm. and you have to choose your battles wisely. You have to choose your friends. All of that is, is a big deal. I have um, f people that I call friends that I can't be their friend on social media because um, all they want to do is argue online about the Bible. And so in my mind, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to unfriend you because I want to be your friend in real life, like outside of it. So I, I'm choosing to not be a friend here so that we can maintain a relationship offline where you only debate, you know, you don't hear inflection, all that kind of stuff. There's things that we learn and we choose to do that that help us to govern our peace, to help us to govern mm -hmm. relationships, friendships. God is looking to see if you can govern. Can you govern your yeah. body? Can you govern your mind? Can you govern your time? And we learn from... Mm -hmm. It's mistakes. I sucked at it, and I'm still. I still suck at it. <laughs> There's a lot of things. I, mean, I just went to the gym today, and like, I want to go every day, it, but it's been something that once you get out of it, then it's like hard to get back in it. But the the the, but every day, the inner me of what I want to do and what I know I should do, the flesh is like, nah, we got too much work to do to make excuses so you don't do what you want to do. I can't choose it. So yeah. now I feel like, well, I got too much. I would love to go, but I just can't. And now you're making up excuses. Just get up and choose to go do it. Govern your body, govern your time so that the outside looks like the inside. And there's Amen. choices that we all can make. Dreams, visions that God has given you. You got yeah. to make choices and, and set goals and continue to keep showing up. And they're powerful. Yeah. Every tiny Every tiny yeah. choice, when you choose the right thing, it adds up when it comes to it health and weight and those things. I lost 60 pounds, right? And, and my, my mantra was like, it's awesome. I told myself 1,000 good decisions. I need, because mm. I made 1,000 bad decisions, probably way more than that, right? Years of eating unhealthy and, you know, all kinds of stuff, not going to the gym and let me make these, a thousand, no. and I would eat five salads or eat salads for a week and then yeah. i wouldn't see the results and then i get um, upset or maybe two weeks or maybe a month or something and you don't see the results and then you quit but just keep making the good choices right. in everything so that you can bring about the beauty and the visions that god has given you and you you deserve it in this life and in the next to be happy to be healthy to be whole you know, whatever it is to, to fight for peace, to contend for, for peace in your own life. It's uh, to choose peace. If, if possible, seek peace with, with all men. Choose, like, yeah. let's just do a, a study on the word choose. <laughs> like, choose this day whom you will serve. Choose. There's a lot of scriptures and prob probably a bunch more that are just kind of fall by the wayside that we have a choice and yeah. we have a say in this matter as well. Yeah. Well, a, a, another area that I focus on is, you know, your agreements set your path for life. And so your agreements, a, an agreement is a choice. And so many things, you know, and, and it's like when you say, well, I, I'm poor, I've never, never been able to make any money. Well, that's an agreement you just chose to agree with when you said it. And, and, you know, we empower things by our words and we make agreements and the thing is we're making agreements all day long sometimes subconsciously and unconsciously we're making agreements that we've been programmed with that again until we actually sit down and begin to go through our programming to question why we believe what we believe and you know what you can choose to believe whatever you want you really can you really have that ability to choose to believe whatever you want but it doesn't make it true and it doesn't make it beneficial for you so evaluate what you believe really begin to look at it and ask the questions and then once you've gone through that process you know I, I i call it the renovation you know you tear down most of the house not all the house you keep the foundation of jesus christ yeah and then you begin to build back the pieces you know that uh you know work better 
you know, in in what you want to see. I want to see humanity in a better position. And I know that God's got the answers to that. And so for me, I'm looking at what are the answers God has and how do we bring that forth? And, and for me, the book is kind of like, I feel like it's my legacy. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be something that if people really get this and understanding your power of choice is really like an epiphany because we all have power of choice, but most people don't really live like they do because they don't realize it until that epiphany lands on them. And, you know, that's what got me out of, out of depression was realizing, wait a minute, I've been agreeing with this idea that I'm a depressed person and I'm chronically depressed. I've been agreeing with it for my whole life until I realized, crap, <laughs> I can choose not to. My goodness, I can choose not to go down that road. And it didn't take long to just recognize when that depression spirit, that spirit of depression would come kind of knocking and and excuse my language but i would just come to the point where i'd say hell no you ain't having a piece of me anymore i'm done with you i'm choosing to go for light love and joy and i'm going down that road and i would turn my eyes toward jesus i would turn turn to the holy spirit and to father engage with them and just not give that spirit that idea of depression any time of day you know not not give it any 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 time at all in my day. Yeah. I just don't need to go down that road. I'm not going to think negatively. I don't want to. I choose not to. But most people want to like the drama. They like the news. It's got yeah. lots of drama. They like shows that are full of drama. You know, we we live this dramatic negative life through the news and 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 movies and everything. And it's like, why are you choosing to do that? Because you're just filling your life with negativity, yeah. which you fill with negativity, it's going to produce negativity. Your choice. Yeah. You get to choose. <laughs> I like the fact that we can learn to hear the voice of Jesus, God, how he speaks, you get familiar with it, but also the, the voice of the accuser, you know, because you learn that voice that's like, hey, Gil. Yeah, today's gonna yeah. suck. Today's just a bad day. Or like, hey, dude, and you're like, hold on. Like, you thought it was you talking, and it is because <laughs> it's coming. It's in here. Nobody else. Yeah, you yeah. hear it. We're like, hold on. That's like, you, you. That voice is now like only voicing the things that I don't like about myself, <laughs> uh -huh, and like, uh -huh. and it's trying to get me to do things. And like, you learn that okay, that's depression. That's this, you know, self sabotage yeah, don't give thing. It the time of day. You haven't helped me at all. You're living rent free. Mm -hmm. At least help me. At least help me do something. <laughs> like I'm not listening to you, you know. And uh, yeah, the fact that yeah. we can get familiar with that voice, and so then when it comes back up, you can say, "No, nah, I'm not listening." So we can focus on the voice of Christ and the stranger's voice. We won't follow. Um, and you guys talked about that uh, recently too, right? You guys talked about the inner critic and like getting yeah. familiar with the inner critic, so that you can say, "No, nah, I don't believe that." Nope. I've, I've come to like, I, it's, he doesn't, he doesn't go away. It should be the same way we can pray it out of me. Like get it, make, make him shut up. You know how you make him shut up? It's showing him better than you can tell him and, or even conversate with him. Let me show you better than I can tell you, you, yeah. you, you know, and, and it, it shuts it up. So for me, I deal with it this way and I may have shared it with you, but with studying the scriptures a lot, because I used to be one to debate a lot. And um, I've separated myself from that for years because I didn't like the person I had become as a Christian just to debate and prove you wrong and study mm -hmm. all of your doctrine and all of these beliefs only to only to prove why you're wrong and my way was right. And I had debates and street preacher and all of that confrontational and loved it and was I would study you just to pick you apart and win a battle with words and whatever. And I didn't like the person that I had become. And it wasn't until this deeper awakening to, you know, I became to study the scriptures and, and talk to people just to, to double down on what we have in common. And there's a lot of peace that came into my life and things. Um, but in that debating, I would debate with friends and you would say something and say, no, that doesn't mean that. You know, I don't think that's what that, that doesn't mean that, man. It'd be like a revelation that, that 
you had in the scriptures or just what you believe about a verse or something. And it would be some, it would be a pearl maybe to you and you share it with somebody and they shoot it down. Usually a religious person because they're the best at it. I mean, I trained myself to do it. They have been trained to do that too. It's a training. It's not default. They were trained, they were taught and you can be untrained and untaught. And there's a process that, that I'm about helping people, you know, Look for the good in things. If you're gonna give me three bad things about this guy, I need I need four good things. What's he doing right? Nothing. Yeah. He's on. You're a liar. You're not balanced. You're 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 one sided. Only seen one side. Give me four you're good things he's doing, and side. then I'll listen to your bad critiques on him. Let's go. Yeah. So, all of that to say, I've lo- that that voice pops up in my head still today, and it's the voice of familiar friends that hmm. I, I don't associate with too much anymore, but they represent this you know, confrontation when it comes to the scriptures that don't mean that. So instead of like, ah, like, okay, like this debate thing, I was like, okay, I I, I hear it as I'm studying. I'm like, wow, this is, this is like these deep revelations that like God is giving me while studying. And then his, my friend's voice comes up in my head and it's the voice of the enemy. It's the accuser of the brethren. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you, you're making that up. You, you're reading that into it. Okay, well, let me give you four more scriptures then. So I'm like, I dive into it with my yeah. precepts and my study to say, okay, yeah, I would never take one scripture out of context and build upon it. Let me give you 17. Let me give you this in every book of the Bible. Because if I believe it, I want it to have a good foundation. And so I still hear the voice. It still comes up. And I've used it now to help my Bible studies to... In my mind, it's as I'm going to teach it to other people, but I'm really convincing myself that I can know it, these concepts and what the truth was that the early church and even before that operated in. And it's come back to serve me. I've learned how to you know, use it for my benefit yeah. with the enemy meant for harm. The Lord in turn uses to, uh, you know, for our good. And I think everybody yeah. can do that, you know identify it and tell it to shut up and even lean into what it's like lean into what it's telling you not to do i was going to post a scripture one day and it was just a simple little scripture jeremiah nothing controversial i was getting i I was getting ready to post it and it said i heard the voice hey don't post that you know all all your new age friends are going to get offended and they're going to they're going to say you're a jesus freak and blah 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 you know but your christian friends are going to like it and I was like, okay, oh yeah. So I don't want to think I'm too religious. I can't, that sounds real religious. I was like, hold on. I wanted to post something and you, this, you're telling me not to post a, a inspirational Bible quote that means something to me in this moment. I can't share it. Hold on, I'm mm-hmm. posting it. And, and I got, uh-huh. I got gangster <laughs> with him. Man, shut up. I'm posting it just because you told me not to. You better stop talking to me because I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to lean into what you're telling me not to do. That's how yeah. we learn, man. And this is this is what's going on in the 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 kingdom of our minds, the kingdoms of our of yeah. our bodies. Yeah, uh, it's so good. And, and I I do the same. I I am I am getting to a point where I am trying to respond in love to the negative things that, like you just said, those yeah. voices. Because for for probably a good I don't know three, four, or five years. I've responded to them just, you know, with that, just a harsh, hell no, yeah. I ain't giving you any time of day. Yeah. yeah. And I will, you know, and honestly, you know, I would cuss the heck out of them if I had to, to get it to yeah. stop. I, I cussed that little him, but I didn't want to say <laughs> when it, yeah, when, when it I mean, came, I was like, man, shut the F up. Man. I ain't going to lie to you. Cause it was like, oh, you the devil talking. Okay. I got you. Yeah. It's like, I, I'm not going to give him the time of day. I have the power and authority over him. Jesus said so Luke 10, 19, that he gave us all power and authority over the enemy. So I've got the power over him. And I've been duped into thinking that I didn't. You know, that's most Christians duped into thinking that they don't have yeah. any power over him. That's why they run around freaking out and, you know, <laughs> you know, about the enemy. It's like, I don't freak out about the enemy. I've got the power and authority over him. You know, so I'm not going to I'm not going to live in fear of him anymore. I'm done with that. Yeah. But, you know, I, I did want to just real quickly, I got 10 chapters literally on just they're 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 titled choosing a good life and i just want to run through real quick you know so these are things that in my life i recognized i can choose i didn't choose them before but i can choose them and i've been living in it 
ever since, you know, in the last five, 10 years, but choosing joy, you know, that's a choice choosing to give the benefit of the doubt. And I dive into each one of these and, and show how it can make your life better. So these are all about choosing the good life and uh, choosing to respond in love, choosing to let go and forgive, choosing to let go of condemnation, judgment, and comparison, um, choosing to think about and choose what you want to believe. That's a big one. Choosing to live a life of honor, choosing expectancy of all things good, choosing to give and receive, not trading. That's a big one. Mm. Choosing your portals. You know, what portals do you want to open up in your life? You know, we open up some negative ones quite easily, but let's look at opening up positive portals and choose to deal with your stuff. <laughs> a lot of times we just want to ignore the things that, you know, we, we, we do need some work in those areas and we want to ignore them. It's like, nah, deal with it. So it's not coming back to haunt you every time you turn around. So those are just some of the, the chapters where, uh, like I said, some of them are really, really powerful. Choosing what you want to believe. You know, I kind of talked about that earlier. Just that we, whether you like it or not, you know, anytime someone says, well, I didn't have a choice. I'm like, I, I almost want to slap them <laughs> because it's like you had a choice. Now, perhaps the consequences of your choice were very obvious into which direction you wanted to go, but you did have a choice on what you, whatever it is. But we choose what we believe, you know, whether it's in, you know, Islam or Hinduism or Christianity or atheism, it's all a choice. And what I managed to do, because I went through a process of uh, literally trying to be an atheist for a, a season. And in that time, I just came to recognize that there's no proof of God. There's no proof against God, you know. We have tons of evidence in lots of different arenas, but there's no proof. And so in the end, you get to take the evidence and choose what you're going to believe. And for me, choosing to stick with Christianity, to stick with Jesus Christ as the way, opened up a portal that allowed me to begin engaging with him in the spirit, which was just blew my mind when I began to do that and began to receive truth that was provable on the outside here in this physical world that I was receiving while in the spirit. And that changed everything. That was remarkable. That's so good. Yeah. And you choose to, to go into, you know, quiet time or into prayer or to engage, um, you know, with yeah. a lot, all the stuff going on, with the voice of the accuser in your head, the voice of the accusers outside of you that are echoing the thing that's inside of your head. It's like, you know, there's a lot of stuff that people are going through, uncertainty and confusion and who is God and even there was a scripture I wanted to read, and, and I, I still may read it. Um, but even as reading that, the voice came up. And, and when it comes up with the Bible, there's something that doesn't want you reading this, these scriptures. I'm going to say tell you that. that. But it was, so we got a lot of friends who were like, um, you know, the Yahweh thing and which God was speaking. There are multiple gods in the Old Testament and New Testament. There's a lot of things. And, and, and knowing that and how it complicates things, let's don't read it then you know it's tainted or whatever don't read it so anything that seems like you know bad or fearsome whatever that's that's a different god and that's not our father you know that's a different there's a lot of people you know teaching that and, and believe that um i see how it all works together for my good no matter which god it is the god of this world listen he's going to be he's working what he's doing is for my good the demons addiction it's working for me. God mm -hmm. sent me here to restore me, to help me restore this place. So I can give him a return and that everything, if it has, if it comes, if I have anything to say about it, if it passes through here, passes through here, then I can redeem it and restore it. So um, I did, as I was thinking of, of sharing this scripture, I was like, nah, don't, don't, don't share that. But, I, but maybe I should share it just because it's the voice told me not to. Right. And it wasn't the voice of the Holy spirit. There's wisdom. There's a gentle voice, but there's an accusing voice that's like, and it's usually because of the opinions of what people are going to think of you. Mm -hmm. I'll say that for me, because you want to be accepted, don't you? You want them to love you. You want them to, to know you're a Christian, right? They think you're a new ager. Don't share that. You need to, well, like all of these things come in and like you got to respond to it or do or do not. But 
Yeah. I, I just wanted to share this. This was just a, a scripture that came to me um, in my study of Job and how we're talking about falling, falling, mm -hmm. falling, falling, and these levels of consciousness, these levels of debauchery, these levels of dimensions, Jesus coming from one dimension. He didn't end there. He fell again. He's going down. He's descending. It's the same word. Um, in my study of Job, it, it led me to this because this scripture here, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, and I'll start at verse 6. It says, The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raises up the poor out of the dust, and he lifts up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among the princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. So in this place of demotion and promo, you can't believe in fallen angels if you don't believe in ascended angels. This, this is talking about the process that, yeah, the Lord killeth, but he also gives life. The Lord tears down, but he also raises up and restores. Like, he gives you according to what you, your choice. Like, yeah. you put yeah. evil in, you're not getting good back. I'm just sorry. You put evil in, you plant an evil seed, an evil tree is planted, and evil fruit comes to you either in yeah. this life or the next. It is in the book of Job. It is that process that we're, we are a part of. Job's process is your process. But he, in the end, he was restored and everything was given back to him, the same things and more. And he got a return on his patience and he got a return on his faith and not given hope because he went through this purification process and he ascended higher than the stature that he was before. The scripture says, 1 Samuel 2 a, he raises up the poor out of the dust, li lifts up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among the princes, to make them inherit the throne of glory. This is telling you that there's a process that the God goes into the earth out of the dust and raises them up to become princes of heaven. Hmm. It's a hmm. process, guys. You are a part yeah. of that process. It's happening around you. It's yeah. it, it, nature invents this. Nature is a part of it's amazing. I get lost in staring at it. The Lord allows me to see it. We all can see it if we if we gaze into it and know it's a thing. It's beautiful. It's happening around you, within you, above you, beneath you. And so just know that, you know, all of this is energy, that your mm -hmm. praise, your choice is energy. God, mm -hmm. when you're going through all of this stuff, and there's no reason for you to praise. You should curse God and die, Job, is what his wife told him. Go ahead and curse God and die because there is no God. God has given up on you. Curse him now. He's like, no, I got. he had a choice right then. He could have. You know what? F God. F all of you. I'm done. If I got to go through this, I don't understand why I'm going through it. Other people aren't going through it. I don't feel like I deserve it. I didn't plant evil. At least I don't know that I did. But why am I going through this? Job still used his voice, used his choice to praise, to honor, and to worship. And so that's just my encouragement yeah. to anybody out there that the realm of the spirit is so potent right now. It's always potent. But when you're going through stuff, when you lost a loved one, when you lose a child, when you lose a job, all of these things, there's no reason for you to praise, man. We praise when everything's going good. Tap in. Just, tell, just yeah. take a deep breath and say thank you. Because as long as you still have that right now, in this moment, you have opportunity to give, to make a choice and choose this day. And I guarantee you, it will come back to bless you. It always does, man. God inhabits Amen. the praises of his people. And we're, we're a part of that yeah. process. And it's not easy. It's not easy by any means, but it's worth it. Yeah. So good. So good. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it uh, and giving me an opportunity to share. Like I said, I feel this book is a little bit of, of, of my legacy, just to share the things that brought me from where I used to be to a place where I'm, I'm content, I'm happy. Godliness with contentment is great gain. 
and it's like um in some ways it's like i'm i'm done i'm not done done but i'm done in the sense of i don't have to prove myself to anyone else anymore yeah and and, and i'll just say to any of your listeners right now that that uh each and every one of you have the power of choice and that is the power of hope because you can choose differently even though things may happen to you doesn't mean you have to respond in kind or respond with something negative respond in love that's how we grow just imagine being able to respond in love in every nasty evil horrible situation what is that going to do to your energy what's that going to do to the power of your choice as you continue to do that <laughs> good thing yeah you know i think that part of this maturing son process is that you know we know the power of our choice and so we we're like mm -hmm. i'd rather say nothing i'd rather create nothing i'd rather do nothing in striving than when i do feel the need or feel the want to do it that it is potent that it carries weight and so these messages like gotta tell the world you know there's a there's a a, a quote in it's a Kabbalistic quote from the Jewish mystics, and it said that those who know don't speak, and those who don't know speak. The ones who claim to be experts and know-it-alls, they're out there telling everybody. It's the baby Christian. <laughs> it's just this. <laughs> Everybody's going to hell. Yeah. You, better, you better be sure. There better be no doubt for you to condemn and pass that kind of judgment on people. You know. But those, once you learn and you come, you're like, I don't even want to tell you because it's so precious and i want you to find out on your own you know because that's the only way you really find out at the end of the day just somebody telling you so choosing yeah. your words yeah. choosing you know what you create what you build you know there is a peace there is a contentment there that's like you just get to govern and watch and your children and and things you know so good people who look up to you but uh people who want to get the book Find out about more of your work. Is it on Amazon yet? It is not. So again, between the 15th and the 21st, I hope it will be on Amazon. I'm hoping to have a big sale day, you know, to, when we launch it. Uh, I, I have a group on Facebook called Choice. Um, and so, and, and you'll know it's mine by the tagline, the most powerful thing in the universe, dot, 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 next to God. Um, so if, if somebody, if, if somebody's interested when they're watching this, I don't know when it's going to air. But if they go to that, that's probably going to give them any information. Uh, so if it's after the 21st, then it'll give the information where they can go to get it. Uh, if it's before that, I'd love everybody to participate and help and help and push the sales up on the day we launch. Um, it'd be cool. Yeah. Not out yet, but out, going to be out soon. Okay. Well, maybe this talk will be live on that day because this is filmed. So we'll put it okay. out the day it goes live so we can run those numbers up because that definitely helps. Um, yeah. the algorithms push it and getting yes. in there in the, the, the bestseller and going to the top of those categories, getting new eyes on your work. Yeah. Trust me, I know. And every sale helps for sure. That would be good. That'd be great. I appreciate it. Needs it needs to get out there, man. This is good stuff. I believe in you and what you're doing and, we, and uh, mm. you're helping people in many, many ways and you're helping me. You've helped me. Mm. So I love you, brother. Thanks for coming on. Love you too, man. It's been so good. Thank we'll you. Do it again. Right. Take care.